What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome to our sixth math major example video following our course on number theory. Now today's example video is going to be following our lectures on divisibility rules as well as solving linear congruences. So for those of you who haven't checked it out, make sure to check out our number theory playlist, which I've linked above. Additionally, we've just rolled out new Patreon benefits for early access to videos that go up on this channel. So if you're interested, you can click on the Patreon link below if you support our mission. And with that out of the way, let's get into our first example. So for number one, we want to find the smallest positive integer n that is divisible by 15 and has the sum of digits equal to 15. Let's start by examining the smaller examples and then go larger. So to start with, obviously we can't make a number that's digits add up to 15 with only one digit number, so we can throw that out right away. There's only two ways to construct a two digit number whose digits add up to 15. That's by adding seven and eight and nine and six. And we can see that 15 does not divide 78, 87, 96, or 69, which means we have to move on to three digit numbers. So with three digits, we know that the last digit has to be five or zero. That goes for two digit numbers as well, but we're actually going to use it here. So we're going to start by looking at numbers with a one in the hundreds place, but we know that the ones place has to have either a zero or a five. But if we have a one in hundreds place, we know it must be a five. And that gives us only one possibility for our middle digit, which is nine. And 195 is divisible by 15, so we don't have to look any further. We actually have our smallest possible positive integer that is divisible by 15 whose sum of digits is equal to 15. And with that out of the way, we can move on to our next example. So now we're going to decide what is the smallest natural number that's divisible by 22 and the sum of the digits is equal to 22. Okay, well, let's note that if 22 divides n, that tells us that 2 divides n. In other words, n is even, so that's pretty obvious. But then also 11 divides n. Okay, but then the 11 divides n is quite important because if 11 divides n, then the alternating sum of the digits of n is congruent to 0 mod 11. In other words, it's a multiple of 11. So that was proven in one of the videos. Okay, so that actually gives us quite a bit of information. So we need the sum of the digits of n to be equal to 22, the alternating sum to be congruent to 0 mod 11. Well, let's see, what's the smallest number of digits that we can use to achieve 22? Well, let's notice we can't use three digits because the largest three digit number is 999, but the sum of the digits there is 27, so it's a four digit number. So let's see if that works. So let's make our guess that our number n is equal to A, B, C, D. I'll put a line over it. That means we have digits A, B, C, and D. Okay, so we need this to be even, so that means that D has to come from the set 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Obviously, for an even number, then we also need A plus B plus C plus D to be equal to 22, as I said. And then we need A minus B plus C minus D to be equal to, well, a couple of possibilities, zero or plus minus 11. So it's gotta be a multiple of 11 by this rule right here, but it cannot be equal to 22 because it's definitely gonna be smaller than this guy up here where we take the sum because we're taking the difference down here. So we could only at most achieve the number 11. Okay, so now let's maybe look at each of these cases one at a time. All right, so let's maybe look at the case where it's equal to zero first. So here, case number one, we have A plus B plus C plus D equals 22, and then A minus B uh, plus C minus D equals zero, and see if that's even possible. Okay, so if we add these two equations, we'll get 2a plus 2c equals 22, which means a plus c equals 11. Okay, so is it possible to achieve that? Well, in fact it is, and that would be maybe with a equals two and then c equals nine. And that's gonna achieve the smallest possible number built off of this setup, given that a is the leading coefficient. 
Okay, so that means that at this point, our number looks like 2B9D. So that's our number N. Okay, so now we can plug that back into our system of equations up there and see what that leaves us with. So we have 2 plus B plus 9 plus D equals 22. And then we have 2 minus B plus C minus D equals 0. Okay, so that tells us a couple of things. That tells us that B plus D is equal to 11. And then the second equation actually gives us the same information. So B plus D equals 11. So we've got B plus D must be 11, but let's notice D has to be even. So making B as small as possible while taking D to be 11 will to give us B equals three and D equals eight. So that gives us a value for N. So notice N looks like two, three, nine, eight. So that's most definitely even because it ends in an eight. It's most definitely a multiple of 11. We can see that it's a multiple of 11 because the alternating sum of the digits is equal to zero. We built it like that. And then also it has sum of digits equals 22. Okay, so here we've got a number. Is it the smallest number? We're not quite sure because we need to work out this second case right here. So let's maybe move on and do that. Okay, so we just finished this first case where this alternating sum was zero. Zero is most definitely a multiple of 11. And that gave us this number n, which was 2398. Now we're going to look at the second case where the alternating sum is a kind of non-trivial multiple of 11. So we'll maybe have to look at two cases, the case when it's negative 11 and positive 11. Let's start with the case where it's positive 11. Okay, so let's notice the case where it's positive 11 will give us the following system of equations, which we can do the same kind of thing to. So let's add these two equations and we'll get 2a plus 2c equals 22 plus 11, which is 33. But that's immediately problematic because this left-hand side is even, whereas this right-hand side is odd. So that means there's no solution here. And then I'll leave it to you guys, but this other case where we have a minus 11 also gives us no solution. So that means in the end, we have this guy right here is our smallest such number. Thanks to Michael for doing problem number two, and we're going to jump into problem number three here. Now, number three says that we need to add a digit on the left and the right hand side of the number 10 so that our new number is divisible by 36. Now I want to recall that in order for 6 to divide n, we must have that 2 divides n and 3 divides n. But since we need our number 2 to be divisible by 36, we will need for 4 to divide n and 9 to divide n. So recall by our divisibility rules, we have that in order for 4 to divide n, 4 must divide both of the last two digits in the number. And as we have that 0 there from our 10, we are going to need to make our last digit 8. So we will choose 8 for our last digit. Next, we need to have 9 divide n, which means we need our alternating sum to be divisible by 9. Uh, our current sum with our 8 there is going to be equal to 9. We need to choose our first digit so that the number is divisible by 9. Now, we could choose a 0 here and get a little cheeky, but I think that's cheating. So we're going to choose a 9 instead, which will give us our final number, 9,108, which you can check on your own to see is divisible by 36. So we're going to get into number 4 here, where we want to determine all positive integers divisible by 792, whose decimal representation is of the form 13xy45z where x, y, and z are unknown digits. So we're gonna start by factoring 792 so that we can maybe apply some divisibility rules to this and limit our number of possibilities. So uh, first we're gonna to check to see if 729 is divisible by three or nine. So to do that, we are going to add up the digits in 729. So seven plus nine plus two and see if it's divisible by nine or three. And indeed it is divisible by nine. It's seven plus nine plus two is equal to 18. So we know that nine divides 792. Next, we're gonna use the, we're gonna use an alternating sum to see if 792 is divisible by 11. So we have seven minus nine plus two is equal to zero and 11 does indeed divide zero. So we have that 11 divides 792. And once we divide those out, we are going to find that what is left is in eight. So we have our factorization for 792, which is eight times nine times 11. 
Now we're going to try to apply some of these rules to limit our possibilities for x, y, and z. And the best one to try to start with is 8, as we have too many options available if we apply our divisibility rules for 9 and 11. So we'll let n equal 13xy 45z. Now since we know that 8 divides n, we know that 8 must divide the last three digits. And fortunately for us, z is in the last three digits, but uh, z is actually in the ones place, so that only gives us one possibility for z. In order for a to divide the last three digits of our number, z will need to be 6, as a 6 in the ones place is the only way that we can have 8 divide the last three digits. So that already eliminates one of our variables from our equations. Next, we're going to apply our divisibility rule for 9. So we know that 1 plus 3 plus x plus y plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is congruent to 0 mod 9, as it is divisible by 9. So uh, we can add up all our numbers there to get x plus y plus 19 is congruent to 0 mod 9. Then we can subtract that 19 over to get x plus y is congruent to negative 19, but negative 19 is congruent to 8 mod 9, so we have that x plus y is congruent to 8 mod 9. And now we're going to apply our divisibility rule for 11 and hopefully have two equations and two unknowns so that we can solve. So we can write out our divisibility rule for 11 as an alternating sum. So we will have 1 minus 3 plus x minus y plus 4 minus 5 plus 6 is congruent to 0 mod 11 for the same reason as above. That will give us x minus y plus 3 is congruent to 0 mod 11. Well, we can move that 3 over just the way we did earlier, and we will get negative 3 mod 11, which is congruent to 8 mod 11. So we will have x minus y is congruent to 8 mod 11. Well, there's only two possibilities for x and y with our second equation here. That is, if x is equal to 9 and y is equal to 1, or if x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, as we can't have negative numbers in our decimal representation. So that gives us two possibilities. Well, we have to see which one of those two works for our divisibility rule for 9, and we indeed find that 8 plus 0 is equal to 8. So our only possibilities for x and y are 8 and 0, which gives us our final answer. It's our one and only solution, which is 1380456, and that finishes off this problem. So for part five, we want to solve the following linear congruences. I'm going to do part A and D, and Michael is going to do parts B and C. So to begin with part A, we want to check to see if there are any solutions, and if there are, how many are there? So to find out if there's any solutions, you want to take the GCD of our coefficient on the left-hand side of the congruence, and the number we are taking mod. So we're going to take the GCD of 2 and 15, and that is obviously going to be 1. And if that GCD divides our number on the right hand side of the congruence, which in this case is 13, then there are solutions. How many solutions are there? Well, that is just equal to our GCD, so we have one solution. Now that we know there's only one solution, we can very easily see that x equals to 14 is our one and only solution because 28 is congruent to 13 mod 15, so that will finish off part A. So now we're gonna look at two congruences and see if we can solve them. So the first is 4x is congruent to three mod six. So let's see if this has a solution. So you might know the trick from the video to see that this immediately doesn't have a solution, but we're go through a couple of more details here. Okay, so let's maybe suppose we do have a solution. So let's say, let's suppose that we have an x, which is an integer, such that 4x is congruent to 3 mod 6. So I'm being a little bit sloppy here with our notation. Up here, x is kind of an unknown variable, but down here, it's a number that we've found. Maybe if we wanted to be more careful, we would call this one like x naught. So let's maybe do that. Okay, but notice that that means that 4x naught minus 3 is divisible by 6. That's the definition of congruence mod 6. That means 4x naught minus 3 is equal to 6 times y naught, where y naught is an integer. But let's note that that tells us that 4x naught minus 6 y naught is equal to 3, but that's a huge problem because this left-hand side is even, whereas this right-hand side is not even. So that means there's, in fact, no solution here. Okay, so let's look at this next one over here. We've got 111x is congruent to 186 mod 321. 
So let's play a little bit different of a game on this. So let's note that 111, 186, and 321 are all divisible by 3. The fact that those are all divisible by 3 means solving this congruence is equivalent to solving the congruence where we divide all the parts by 3. Again, that was proven in one of the lecture videos. So let's see. Uh, 111 divided by 3 is equal to something like... 37, so we have 37x, and then 186 divided by 11, that's equal to something like 62, and then 321 divided by 11 is 107. So we're left with this congruence right here. So 37 is congruent to 62 mod 107. So let's notice that 37 and 107 are relatively prime. That means 37 has a modular inverse mod 107, and you would get that by doing the extended Euclidean algorithm. I won't really do that because that's kind of a lot of work which is in a previous video, but what you can figure out is that 37 times 81 is congruent to 1 mod 107. So that means in order to solve this, we multiply both sides by 81. So that'll give us x is congruent to 62 times 81, and then reduce that mod 107, and what you'll get is the number 100 mod 107. But now we'd like to bring this single unique solution back up to solutions in our original congruence. But since 321 divided by 3 is 107, that means we can add on one or two copies of 107 and get something that is incongruent mod 321. So that means our final solutions will be 100 mod 321. So that's adding on zero copies of 107. And then 207 mod 321. So that's obviously adding on one copy of 107. And then finally, adding on another copy of 107 will be 314 mod 321. So there's our three solutions, our three incongruent solutions mod 321. And let's notice by a theorem in the video, we know there should be GCD of this number and this number of solutions, but there are exactly three solutions there. So that's good. So for part D, we wanna see if there are any solutions just the same way we did before. So to check if there's any solutions for part D, we're going to want to take the GCD of 589 and 635, and the GCD between those two numbers is equal to one, and we know that one divides everything, so we will in fact have solutions and we will have one solution. We will need to solve the equation 589, let's call it x0 as we've already used x, plus 635y0 is equual to 209. And you will solve this using the extended Euclidean algorithm, but I'm not going to include it here because it will take a very long time. But after you work out the extended Euclidean algorithm, you will find that the only values for x0 and y0 that will work here are negative 184 and 171. And you can see if I multiply those out, we will get negative 108376 plus 1085585, eight, which is in fact equal to 209. So our only solution is x equal to negative 184, which finishes this problem off, and that's a good place to stop.